Hey everybody, welcome back to Lux Biz. I'm Tatiana and today I have Cherie Yvette here joined with me. Um, she is the founder of The Urban Cowgirl and she has a digital agency where she works with the top 1% of Amazon sellers with their Amazon ads. Yes. Cherie, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Super excited. It's so great to spend time. Um, yes. yes, and so your audience, tell me a little bit more about like what your audience is working on. Yeah, in terms so I mean my audience, everyone is kind of new to selling online, they're interested, they mm -hmm. kind of have one foot in the door, one foot out. And so um, some people are kind of more advanced and okay. so they've already got their products set up on Amazon and these are the people that we want to kind of address this video to today. So we okay. want to help them with their PPC, Amazon PPC ads, because I know it can be confusing. I know I was confused and I ended up turning off my ads because I just didn't oh, even know no. what to do with them. Right. So maybe we can start at, let's start a little bit about you and mm -hmm. just how you got into Amazon advertising because I know a lot of people are sellers and you're kind of on the other yeah, side. Yeah, no, no, I'm not a seller. <laughs> I, I started in advertising at the beginning of, of Google AdWords, like in the early days of Google AdWords. And so I've been doing nothing but advertising for 15 years. Wow. I know, right? Just advertising every day. So I have an instinct for it and I really love it. And then it just, I, my specialty is scale and competition. So Amazon seemed like a really nice fit. Lots of scale, lots of com competitors, right? On the pages and the product categories and, and everybody I was talking to was talking about how competitive it was. So it felt like a really good fit for me. So in 2016, I just pivoted and started working solely on Amazon campaigns. Mm -hmm. And it's just been amazing. Like. The thing I would say is the best about Amazon is, is that, you know, with Google, you're working with big brands and you're doing a lot of big accounts. And, and the thing about Amazon is you get a lot of small sellers, you know, you right. get a lot of like brother, sister teams and yeah. sister teams and friends that are doing these products and they're selling millions a month. Yeah. And it's so exciting to be able to work with like just people that, that have a small business, but they have the scale that Amazon allows yeah. them. That's the exciting part. Mm -hmm. So um, why should people turn on their Amazon ads? Well, the main reason is, is just the keyword history piece. You know what I mean? I can't preach it enough. Like when you buy Amazon advertising, unless you are ranked organically, you have no keyword history with the Amazon algorithm for your sales. Mm -hmm. Like the, the algorithm doesn't know you're selling. Um, and if you turned on your ads and turned them right off, you probably didn't spend enough time to establish the kind of history that would start to boost your organic ranking and boost your overall sales and your overall visibility. You can't really come in, it's, it's really a long view prospect. So it's a project where you have to come in and you know, I do all my campaign strategies at like 90 days, right? Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, year one, year two. So you're not really able to come in and see results in a few months, especially a few weeks. So you kind of have to take a moderate strategy with a few targeted keywords and really just make sure that you can ramp that strategy up and, and that you can spend the time with it so the algorithm starts to associate your product with those keyword searches in a way that is meaningful so that you can start to get more sales. So you can't just set up a campaign, leave it on for two weeks, and then judge the, camp, no. the keywords based on that campaign? You really can't. You can judge them based on your sustainability metrics. So you can't like put a campaign up and it's running 100% ACoS and it's breaking your bank. That's not sustainable. Yeah. It's got to go down. Yeah. Um, but if you have a campaign that's at break even or you just can't see the upside, like you, you know, you're just spending money to break even, but you're like, I'm not making any money here and it's a real pain, why am I doing this? That's really the time to kind of stop in your tracks and say, I'm doing this to build keyword history. Right. I'm building this, I'm doing this to build sales history on the keywords I need to rank on. Right. You know, how else are you going to get that history? Because if you do a, and uh, there's so many good launch strategies that are completely different, you know, game plan, I don't do that. But you know, you could be doing product giveaways and there's all these other launches. But if you're not building the keyword, the algorithm is a keyword, it's a search mechanism, right? So the algorithm is just basically going keyword by keyword and saying, okay, what products sell best for this? Right. And if you don't enter that game on a keyword level, you really can't win. Right. So, so say, you just kind of push yourself further down. Gotcha. So say, you know, I just launched my product, I haven't turned on my Amazon ads, but I'm trying to rank my product organically because I want to save money on advertising. Right. Now, if my competitor has their ads on, same thing, same timing, yes. are they going to rank better than me just because they turn on ads? Like, uh, not even ma uh, manual ads, the, the ads that Amazon does for The me. auto ads are just not that, you know, auto campaigns are okay. I'm not going to like, a, auto campaign is good for one thing. Your auto campaigns are really good for low cost clicks mm -hmm. and sales cheap. It's like they kind of sell you remnant traffic in the autos. So what you get there is Amazon saying, well, if we could just put this ad wherever we want, um, we'll give you that for 90 cents a click. Right. You go to buy that same keyword and you're going to spend like 250 a click, you know? Mm -hmm. So who doesn't want a 90 cent click? You know, it's a deal. If you can get those sales at like a 30% cost and you can do it consistently, I do it all day long. 
but it's not going to be where you build keyword history. It's not valuable to you in the long game. Mm -hmm. The long game, it's not valuable at all. So you want to do a manual campaign. Right. You want to pick your keywords very targeted. Um, and so your question about, one more time, if someone is, else is running an ad. Yeah, so someone uh, ranking organically without mm -hmm. any um, external advertising yes. versus someone who has the Amazon ads on. Yes, you'll do totally, yeah, we have that all the time. Yeah, it's yeah, because you're above the fold. And also, you know, people don't have to scroll to find you, and you're also getting that brand visibility in those right. ads. Um, and if you do it consistently over time, yeah, you will definitely do better than your competitors, in, in, at least the sales category and the brand category. Yeah. And then you know it's it's super important though that you keep um, you know that, that you stay consistent though because it won't it won't work mm -hmm. unless you stay in it for a so while. So say like so you said ninety days is a good amount of time. I think ninety days is a great amount of time to judge even the results of what you're trying to test. Okay, gotcha. So if I'm going to test something, I'm usually giving it a ninety day window right. before I make a judgment. Right. And unless it's totally terrible ACOS and I shut it down. Yeah, like hundred percent right? ACOS. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had some campaigns. I know. Um, it's funny you say that because the campaigns that I started at the beginning of my business were like 40, 50% A cost. Uh -huh. And then when I, the, like the latest ones uh -huh. were like 90%, 100%. Mm. Like, oh, no. so I See, and you may be in a situation where you have to reestablish sales history yeah. on those keywords, yeah. you know, or you were probably in yeah. at a time where the cost per click might have been a little less. Yeah. Um, but if you're trying to build um, keyword history, you really should be bidding in manual campaigns, very structured. Right. Okay, so how do I find the best keywords for my product? That's what we were talking about. So, such a good question. Okay, when you're looking for keywords, there's like three criteria that I use when I select a keyword. So, your first criteria is you look at all the main titles, mm -hmm. right? All the titles in your category. So, you have a keyword you're trying to rank on, your yeah. most important keyword. Go look at all the titles that already exist mm -hmm. and, and look at their keywords in the title. The keywords that show up the most frequently in all titles are really important. So, say like the first 10 listings yeah. on Amazon? Yeah, pull all those titles all aside, those titles. go through and pull out the keywords. And if you see that keyword showing up frequently, times, multiple yeah. times, the more frequency, yeah. the more important it is to the algorithm. Right. Like, because you're just looking at what the algorithm gave to you, right? right? So, if the algorithm considers you can see the algorithm considers that keyword important or it wouldn't show up so frequently, right? Right, right? So go look at that. Next, you can go to a good keyword tool, any kind of, you know, merchant words or any what of the, the good tools. Um, it's okay. I don't think you want to use an outside tool to pull, you know, Amazon okay. data. So any Amazon keyword tool, okay. um, for sure, Amazon. And you'll go there, and then you're going to want to you're going to want to take the keywords that have the highest search volume. Mm. That's your next kind of criteria. So you've got the ones that show up in the titles. Mm -hmm. Now go look at the ones that have high search volume, because that's going to give you scale. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to build keyword history and you're going to pay for it, yeah. you know you don't want to buy it on these little keywords. Yeah. I mean, you want to buy it on keywords that are going to actually impact your bottom line. So pick some ones in the middle. Right. Not the big, crazy, broad ones, but ones that are kind of moderate. Uh -huh. Get those. And then your third, you know, you, you know, your third thing with keywords is, is you really just have to, to go in after you get the volume and then you get the ones in the title. The thing is you really got to look at, at relevance, right? And relevance is not a generic term. Most people use relevance kind of generic. Mm -hmm. Relevance is like what is relevant to your product. Right. Right? right? So like you have a product, um, your product is red, your product is soft, your product is waterproof, your product, and these are all modifiers. These are like the keywords people use to make shopping decisions, right. like they're preference keywords, like I want a red one, mm -hmm. I want a cotton one, I want a soft one, I want to, yeah. you know what I mean? These are, yeah. you know what the words would be like, right? So those are keywords that are only relevant to your product yeah. and those are actually your best keywords so most people are looking at like the general market keywords when it's like no start on the stuff that really describes your differentiation right. or your uniqueness and then you can win and then when you win on those then you don't get that 90 percent a cost you get like the 30 percent a cost and you have a little padding in your pile and then you can kind of start branching out into the stuff a little broader yeah and one thing i want to mention on that is um you know, if you're doing look, looking at all the top ten titles and you pull these keywords and you see that like blue is a keyword, yes. but if blue isn't relevant to your specific product and you put it in your campaign and people come to your product and it's so bad, blue, then they're gonna leave your listing. And so that's bad. bad, it's really bad for your. It's it's totally useless to you, which is why when you get a big list of keywords, you need to filter those keywords. Right yourself you yeah. know what I mean that's what I was you know we were talking human. about earlier human, human. Yeah. you know what I mean that's the only I wouldn't have a job if anything could be done with artificial intelligence I would be out of work 15 years ago right I mean let's get real why do people hire me right it's yeah. like if this could be done by a keyword tool for $25 a month you would certainly not pay my fees I'm right. telling you that right now yeah. Yeah. so at the end of the day it's like you need to be instinctive with your products yeah. and you need to filter those keywords because you're right not only think about this though not only will those blue keyword searches not buy 
If they do buy, because people are not coherent sometimes when they're shopping and adding to their cart, you'll get a nasty review. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, that happens. You know what I mean? If yeah. you put a keyword in your title or in your ad campaigns and then um, your product doesn't deliver on that keyword, yeah. it's really you're playing with fire. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess moral of the story is you really got to do the research yourself. You and do. Don't just rely on Absolutely. Because they can't be super accurate. They can't. And they don't know your product. Yeah. They don't know your market. Like yeah. you had an idea why your product goes to the market it went to. You know your customer. Yeah. You know your market. You know your product. Uh, you want to leverage that. Totally, you yeah, know, so yeah. you can get your angle, just like your angles in your product. You want your angle yeah. in your ad campaigns. Yeah. It's a little bit of magic so there. Now, with a campaign, um, what you, I heard you say that you would break even yes. with the campaign. So Absolutely. you're aiming for like 50%? Um, most of my campaigns. I can also help with that. Like, So another good tip on that is you know, you, you have several campaigns that you're, you're laying out, and, and your category keywords should really convert at about like you know, 35 to 45% ACoS. cost. Yeah. yeah, I usually stay below 45 Okay. If there's a keyword driving like hundreds of orders a day, which I have a lot of those, sometimes I'll let it go up into the 65 range, yeah. um, but it's got to be delivering hundreds of orders. If it's right. only like 20 orders, I would never pay it. 45% is about the cap for like a normal keyword with normal sales. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then how many campaigns would you set up for like one product? Okay, it depends on the product. So if you have a product in, with, a lot, with a parent, with a lot of child ASINs, yes, right? Okay, okay. It's a different, different campaigns. Okay, so if you have a big, a good parent ASIN and all these child modifiers that have different attributes, even if it's as simple as color or size, um, you're going to set up separate campaigns for all of those. Okay. Each child ASIN. Really? And then wow. some, I know, you're like, that's so much work. <laughs> but don't do it this way. Let's try. Okay, so don't go after every single modifier. You know, you do in the end. But in the beginning, go into your business reports. Mm -hmm. This is it. Go to your business reports. Download your business report and sort your sales highest to lowest over 90 days and then over a year. And look at what color variations sell best and build those three into oh, their own one. campaigns. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 And then if that works successfully, then you can go and take the next the three. Them, yeah. And then the next yeah. three, right? That way you're not like building campaigns yeah. for like $100. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I got $100 in sales because this modifier. But um, your big three, you should, without question, have a separate campaign on all modifiers. Interesting. That's uh -huh. a great point right there. Yeah, yeah. Now, what are your thoughts on short-tail keywords versus long-tail keywords? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we talked about that today. So um, I'm not especially interested in the beginning on short or long. So... Short tail keywords are great when you're really seasoned and your campaigns are rocking and rolling. So for me, okay, so for me, like, okay, so the long, okay, it's, such a, it's a kind of a long explanation. Okay, so I like to start in the mid tail, which is the keywords that just have modifiers. So say we were going back to towels as an example. I would want to start on white towels, pink towels, blue right. towels, long before I started on bath towels. I know I could win on these colors by matching up the color ASIN to the color keywords. I know that I could, and that's another thing. So when you build out your campaigns, you want to be, you know, if you're advertising a color in that modifier, you want to match up the color. Right. And you don't have to necessarily do much with size there, you know, unless size is a key buyer trigger, but mostly color is a bigger trigger than size. So, you know, if I, it's kind of complicated, but if I'm doing that, um, I, I'll kind of, you know, go in and, and I'll, I'll separate those modifiers. And I'm just, I can't, I, just too, I don't think I can explain. I'll try to do the best <laughs> I can. So, so short tail to me is a secondary strategy. And then do you ever run your search term report? Um, honestly, I have to be honest, guys. I have See, that's why I'm like, Amazon it's too technical. Because I've been doing all this organic. Yeah, and, and you do all this stuff. Awesome. Yeah, no, my gosh, no. <laughs> yes, no, 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 no. It might be too technical because you run a search term report and your long tail keywords you should get from the search term report. Okay, gotcha. They should have buy, they should have sales history. So you wouldn't go for short term, but you would go for medium in the beginning and then head to the long term? Yes, I would. Before. I would. After I have sales data. So I run my reports from my campaign. So I start out with this good, you know, kind of mid tail, which is like modified keywords. And then from there, I run my reports and then I pull those down. And then if there's long tail variations in my search term report, I add those in. Awesome. That's how I pull long tail. I don't pull the long tail as a test from a keyword tool. Right. I definitely like to mine yeah. mine the long tail off of my other keywords in my campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I do for my YouTube videos mm -hmm. is before I even decide on the title or decide on like the keywords because they give you some space for keywords. Yeah. I go in an incognito window and I search like yes. the keyword and then I see all the long tail ones that auto populate and then I use all those. Those are super good. And I incorporate them in my title <laughs> and in my keywords and I feel super like super good. Definitely 
that so does help. So similar with That's Amazon. super, yeah, to do the auto, yeah. So you can, you can do like the way that the, um, the results will auto populate and show you those trends. Yeah. Super smart, super yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, but even with advertising, it's even more dreamy because you get to see your own auto population because you right. go into the report and you have your keywords on one side, you have your search terms on the other. Mm -hmm. So you get to see how people search for the product, right? You get yeah. to see the actually, you see those auto keywords, you know, the, yeah. the more populated keywords, you get to see those and those are what you put into your account. So yeah. they're really exciting, those keywords, because you have sales data on them. Right. So uh, I want to wrap up here, but I have one more question sure. for you. Mm -hmm. So I know you work with um, really the high, you know, big mega sellers. I do, I do. I like, yeah, I just only because my strategy. Yeah. You know, it's not, it, you know, people don't really need me in the early <laughs> phase. Like, yeah. I'm always telling them that. Like, I have so many people ask them, you don't need me. Yeah. You, just need to, you need to go jumping on it. You need yeah. to do some research. You need to do some tests. You got to make some small bets. We got to make some big yeah. moves. There's so much for you to do here in your exactly. campaigns to learn about your product and your sales and ads. Uh, before you ever need to bring me in. I mean, when yeah. I'm coming in, it's got to be a hard problem, you know? So what takes a seller to go from uh, the third ranking to number one? Like, what is, is there one thing? See, that's that not, you know, I don't think, no, uh -uh, you can't. There's no, like, I don't measure, like, my organic rank by position always. Mm -hmm. Some keywords you could. Mm -hmm. But, but I'm always re really looking at it more from from just the overall sales velocity. Mm -hmm. So what I tend to compare is I have three metrics. So I'm looking at what my I'm looking at my spend, you know, mm -hmm. like what I'm spending in advertising. Then I'm looking at what I'm selling in advertising, mm -hmm. and then I'm looking at what I'm selling in the business report. Mm -hmm. So I compare those metrics. I never look. I never calculate ad spend against ad sales. I'm always calculating ad spend against total sales. Right. And that's kind of the metric I look for leverage in. So I'm right. seeing if my total sales are increasing. And if they're not, I haven't figured it out yet, even yeah. me. Yeah. So that's why I say 90 days. I work on an account for 90 days sometimes before I crack the code, figuring out how am I going to get velocity with this. And if I go to the business center and there's not growth, like day over day, year over year, like 50% growth, double growth, if I don't see those numbers, then I haven't figured it out yet. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so make sure you look at those <laughs> just day-to-day -day total sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, one piece of advice for our new sellers here, what's one thing that you tell them to avoid at all costs? Like where you've seen people mm -hmm. waste a lot of money or avoid make a avoid. lot of mistakes. Like just don't do this type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you could advise? Yeah, I think that's a good question. So what, what would I really avoid? Well, I would avoid just putting too many keywords that you have no data on. Hmm. Um, I, I would avoid putting too many keywords into your campaigns uh, that, that you just don't have. Like just stuffing yeah, them. just stuffing them in there because they, they came off of a keyword tool. I right. think you need to filter those and read those and right. you need to put the qualifiers down. Like, is this a frequency keyword? Is it showing up a lot? Is there search volume on this right. keyword? Because if you're going to fight to win that keyword and get the history on it, should be a good keyword. Quality over quantity. Yeah, that would be my biggest thing I see people make a mistake with. And then what you said, just just kind of, you know, like that linear thing, you know, thinking of their campaign as a line and then when they don't see results really quickly, cutting it yeah. instead of thinking of it as a circle and it's a feedback loop and giving it some time gotcha. sustainably yeah. to grow and kind of wow yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Sheree. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much you. for all the value okay. added here. Super good. I'll be linking all your stuff down below. And Thank you. And is there anywhere, you know, where they can find you? Um, just the urbancalgirl.com. Yeah. Always. That's where I always okay. am. And your agency? Is Wild West Media. Awesome. Yeah. Wild so West we'll Media. we'll have links for that down below. Again, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. So much fun. It was <laughs> great. Thank you. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell symbol so you get notified whenever I've got a new video. I highly recommend that you click the link in the description so you can subscribe to my mailing list so I can send you free Amazon FBA tr video trainings. And if you want to continue watching, I recommend one of these videos here. So click it.